Hello class, this is our first uh, video lecture and today we'll talk about chapter 1.1 and about systems of linear equations and most of, of material might be familiar to you but still it's good to repeat some things. And as usual, as I mentioned before in previous videos, you have to read the book ahead of time. So if you haven't read the book, uh, please pause this video, read chapter 1.1, and then come back to the video. Otherwise, you might feel very confused. Okay, let's talk about linear equations. You probably see many of them, but it won't hurt to remind that linear equation and everything in this kind of form when they're constant multiplied by the variable. And it can be as many variables as you want. Here, the variable is x1 from x1, x2 to xn. And our constant is or coefficient is a from a1 to an. And our coefficients a can be either real or, co or complex numbers. And on the right hand side of this equation is another number, which is called b or free parameter. Um, it's uh, sometimes not easy to recognize those equations. Like, for example, here we can see which something from the first look does not quite look like a linear equation. But if we are distributed to on the right hand side, you see that now there is like all our variable here multiplied by numbers. So if we move x1 and x3 to left hand side, we will have equation in the same form as we saw above. So by matching the coefficient, we can find the values of our coefficient a1, a2, and a3. So, and this is how you are recognized linear equations. But one linear equation that's not always useful, most often scientists try to solve the system of this equation, which is just basically two, three, four, as many as linear equations as you want, which has a common solution. For example, here, there is a two system of two linear equations with two variables, which are pretty familiar to you with pre-calculus or any other math course. And um, they are reasonably easy to solve because each one of them represents an equation of line. For example, here, L, L1 represents solution of equation one, L2 represents equation of, uh, solution of equation two. And we say that the system of equation has a, can either has no solution, has one solution, or have infinitely many solutions. And in the cases of exactly one or many solutions, we usually call the system consistent. And if there is no solution, we call system inconsistent. And here above, clearly our two line intercept in one point, which indicate exactly one solution. On in other words, our system is consistent. So how we can convert system of equation into the matrix? We can just do it by organizing our coefficient. For example, let's look at this system of three equations with three variables. If we arrange all our variables um, in the rows and all our, uh, all our equation in the rows and variables in the columns, we can have a nice um, kind of a table first. I like to organize it as a table first and then translate the table into the matrix. So now we can construct what's called a coefficient matrix by taking all the variables, uh, all the coefficients which relate to variable x1 and put it in a column. For example, here, coefficient for x1 is one, there is no x2 in the second equation, so a coefficient for x2 is zero. And in a third equation, the coefficient for x1 is five. So we have a nice column. We can repeat this experiment and arrange the row for the variable x2, and then repeat for, x, for the x3. As you can see, the better you organize your system, the more vertically arranged your variables are, the easier it is to construct the matrix. Uh, we can also add the right-hand side or number in the right-hand side to the matrix, and then we will call it an augmented matrix. So we can take the right-hand side and add it as a column to the right of our coefficient matrix. 
Um, and generally, when we're talking about the matrix, we refer to the matrix size as number of rows and a columns. For example, for our coefficient matrix, we have three rows, three columns, or we call it three by three matrix. For our augmented matrix, we actually have a four columns and three row. So we refer to three by four matrix. So generally, rows come first, columns come second. Okay, this is enough for today, and I'll see you for another video.